Arsenal is expecting to extend its five unbeaten run in the Premier League against Man City and Man City too have won close to the last are they 10 games without losing even a single point and they've gathered maximum points welcome to rokani football podcast and as you know today we are bringing you the arsenal predicted lineup versus man city and that game is happening tomorrow on the first of 2022 that is january in that's the first game that kick starts off the day and it's the premier league game that is kick starting off the year in style in there for you arsenal having some bad news in there in the right back position very all the possible all the possible people to play in there uh, some are having COVID, others are injured in there, and they will go for a late fitness test whether they'll feature into this game. But as you know, in here at the Rokani Football Podcast, me and my team have come out and really compiled a team that we feel like Arsenal are really going to front on as they talk on the side which goes by names of Manchester City. Remember, the game is happening at the Emirates Stadium, and the first game that happened this season at the Etihad Stadium, guess what happened? Arsenal was hit by five goals to nil in there for you. Remember Grant Xhaka, who was the captain of the day, I think, got a red card in there for you and he never completed the entire 90 minutes. He got the red card, I think, into the first half of the game and that was close to in the 40th minute and he was sent off the pitch. Man City, by that time, we are just three goals to nil and they went ahead to capitalize and score more two to make it five nil in there for you smash the like button comment and share and if i told you are watching us for the very first time go into the lower right bottom corner there is that red button with the word subscribe hit it and after subscribing hit the notification bell that will let you that will let you that will let you notified each and every time we upload a video onto this channel Hitting the notification bell does not apply only to those that have, that have not yet subscribed. And if I told you already subscribed to this channel and you never hit the notification bell, you have to really go ahead and hit it because you are missing out on content that we come up with here onto the Rokani Football Podcast in there for you. This is the last day of 2021 and it's 31st January 2022 and we've commenced 2021 and we've commenced it with the story of the Arsenal predicted lineup versus Man City. This game is happening on, it's happening tomorrow, that is 12.30 hours, that is British time in there, but in this other time, I think it's going to be 15.30 hours. That's when that game is really going to happen, you know, we are now three hours in front of all in front of the England time because they are in winter and time changes in there. Now, let's get into the predicted Arsenal lineup as compiled by the Rokani Football Podcast team in there for you. And you guys have the right to uh, to put in players that you think that I really missed out. And the system, you can really come out to your system and really let me know how you want Arsenal to stand in this one. Lego. That is the stadium where everything is going to take place. It's known as the Emirates Stadium. That is Bukayo Saka, key man for Arsenal in their squad. A press into their recent game in there for you. That is the key man for a team which goes by names of Arsenal. Bukayo Saka, he came from the academy of Arsenal and was introduced in by Unai Emery. They are passing on a team which goes by names of Man City. And right now, Bernardo Silva is that target man and main man for a team which goes by names of Man City in there for you. And Arsenal's manager, who goes by names of Mikel Arteta, is missing out on this one. Reason he is having COVID 19. He tested positive for COVID 19. And there is no way he is really going to come up and coach this game in there that means he's really going to be away in there for you and that is Mikel Ateta in there for you and his assistant managers who go by the name of Steve Rowland and the other one is it Stevenson are really going to come through and do the needful into this game they are going to be on the touchline because Mikel Ateta is into isolation in there for you after testing positive for COVID-19. Now, the best manager in the world right about now, who goes by the names of Pep Guardiola, is expected to be on the bench of Man City because for him, he is not he has not yet tested positive for COVID-19 in there. So, that is how Arsenal and Man City are really going to feature when it comes to the managers in there. So, we get straight into the predicted lineup 
of a team which goes by names of Arsenal as they face on a team which goes by name Man City. Just know later, we are really going to come back with a team of Man City in there for you, the predicted Man City lineup to face Arsenal. But for starters, we are really doing Arsenal starting 11 versus a side which goes by the names of Man City. Smash the like button, comment and share. This is Rokani Football Podcast and your reaction to this story is welcome into the comment section below. We start off with our goalkeeper Aaron Ramsdale. He is really the number one choice goalkeeper of Arsenal, doing wonders, keeping lots of clean sheets. But we wait and see, can Arsenal really fail to really come through and concede goals as the Man City squad, they are scoring for fun. Cedric Soares is expected to undergo a late fitness test because Tomiyasu is Tomiyasu is injured and we don't know whether he's really ready. And if I told I'm the manager of Arsenal, there is no way I'm going to hurry back Tomiyasu because if I told I hurry him back in the Man City game, that's bad because this is not the right game to hurry him back. I think it's better to hold in a little and bring in the likes of Cedric Soares or Calum Chambers. Um, it would have been Martin Nels, but he's away in there. Is, is he also? I think he tested positive for COVID-19. He's also out of action into this game. So I think Cedric Soares or Calum Chambers or Rob Holding, any of those three is expected to come in and play into this game of football in there as Arsenal takes on a side, which goes by names of Man City at Emirates. Ben White is expected to play to the central defense because for him, he's fully fit alongside a man who goes by names of Gabriel Magal is in there for you, the Brazilian who have really had a very good partnership in there into the central defense of Arsenal in there. Again, they undergo a very big test of a team which goes by names of Man City. The last time they faced, I think, but last time Man City faced Arsenal, they never had Ben White, they never had Gabio Magales, they only had Pablo Mari, Kolazinak, no, they had Pablo Mari, Calm Chambers, and... Um, Calm Chambers and another player who goes by names of Rob Holding. Those three were playing as the three central defenders and Arsenal played with five defenders in there. So this time round, I feel like Arsenal might go for a four-man defense in there and Gabio Magales and Ben White are on a test right now. Can they really stop Man City from really looking at the back of the net? Because Brentford was able to do it. Man City just put one goal past a team which goes by the names of Brentford. So that means if Arsenal are solid enough, they can really stop Man City from scoring. And you know, Arsenal really has a very good forward that can really go through and really hurt the side of Man City. Because Man City defensively, they are not all that good, but what they do, they really keep themselves a lot with the ball in there and they deny you possession in there. The left fullback, I think it's going to be Kian Tierney, Nuno Tavares, in the two big games that he was given, that one against Liverpool, he really spoiled everything and he resulted into that Diego Jota goal that gave Liverpool a two, a two, a two goal lead into that game. Then the game of Manchester United, he gave, you know, he gifted away the ball and Pedro and Diego Delo played in Marcus Rashford that squared the ball to Ronaldo and Ronaldo bagged it in the back of the net and that gave United a 2-1 lead over a team which goes by names of Arsenal and all those mistakes were done by Nuno Tavares and the opponents of Arsenal capitalized onto them and they went ahead to beat Arsenal in there. So to me I really feel like Kian Tierney is going to come through having scored a goal against a side which goes there is a side they hit by four goals to nil recently and they are really now into a very, very, very good shape in there for you. So we wait and see what really happens for Arsenal in there for you. Kian Tierney scoring in a goal and I think the other previous game he was really responsible for an assist in there for you. So I really feel like he's into the right mode for him to come in through and play into that position because what Arsenal needs now, they don't need a, a fullback who really plays that area line all goes forward a lot. They need a fullback who is good defensively and if at all you are to compare between Nuno Tavares and Kian Tierney who is good defensively, obvious case it's Kian Tierney who is really going to come in through and do that job for a team which goes by names of Arsenal. Now we go to the double midfield pivot because Arsenal plays with a system of a four for a 4 2 3 1 in there for you. Thomas Pate, the Ghanaian. We wait to see whether Ghana is going to allow Thomas Pate to play this game. Remember, all African players who are really going to play into the African Cup of Nations were 
supposed to report to the camps of their national team on the 27th of December. But Thomas Partey is now close to four days late in there because he even went ahead to play to that recent game that Arsenal played. And trust me not, he was not supposed to play in that game. He was supposed to be playing. He was supposed to be into the training camp of a team which goes by the names of... by the names of... by the names of Ghana. And... Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. This was supposed to be his last game because Arsenal played it on the 26th of December. And the following day, Thomas Partey was expected to board and go to Ghana in there for you. But all in all, I think Arsenal have negotiated with Ghana. And this is going to be the last game that Thomas Partey is going to play for a team which goes by names of Arsenal in there for you. And I heard that Arsenal really wanted to release Thomas Partey after playing the double encounter of Liverpool in the semi-finals of the Carabao Cup. And they were supposed, and they were really requesting Ghana to release Thomas party on the ninth after on the ninth because on the ninth Arsenal are playing in the third round of the FA Cup they are playing Nottingham Forest in there for you so they felt like this was a game that he was not supposed to play but after playing Liverpool on the 6th of on the 6th of January that's when Arsenal was expecting a team which goes by names of Ghana to have Thomas Partey into their camp. But we expect him to start in this game of football as a team which goes by names of Arsenal host Man City. The other player is Granit Xhaka. I think they are really having a very good partnership between him and Thomas Partey. And I think if all goes well and no one tests positive for COVID, that's how the midfield of Arsenal is really going to stand. Martin Odegaard, one of the best informed players of a team which goes by names of Arsenal, is into for you. And he's really going to come up and do the needful for a team which goes by names of Arsenal <laughs> into the central attacking midfield. Bukayo Saka, right attacking midfielder, scoring a press against Sunderland. And he is really looking great in there for you. And he is expected to start there. Martinelli. He is stuck into that position and we don't expect a player who goes by the names of Emily smith rue to return into the starting lineup of Arsenal soon because Martinelli is really doing great. But you never know, the manager can really change because Martinelli has played lots of football and Emily smith rue might get him in. But Emily smith rue has proved that in the last three games, he has scored three goals and he has been coming from the bench against West Ham, against Sunderland, and against Leeds in there for you. Those three games, he has bagged in three goals, and all of those goals has been coming in from the bench. And I really think that if I'm the manager of Arsenal, I really leave Martinelli to start and Emily Smith Rowe to come in through and do the needful into the substitution or the second half because he comes in with new energy and he has proved that each and every time he comes in with new energy he bangs in goals for fun that is martinelli in there for you we expect him to start for a side which goes by the names of Arsenal in there for you. And guess who is leading the line? Lacazette is leading the line. Aubameyang was thrown over the bus and he was the first Arsenal player, all Premier League player, to arrive into the camp of his national team on all those African teams that are really going to participate into the African Cup of Nations in there for his hope. That is what we had for you into the starting lineup of Arsenal. Ramsdale in goal, Cedric Soares, right back. Ben White, Gabriel Magales, central defenders. Kian Tierney playing as the left fullback Thomas Partey and Grant Xhaka playing as the double midfield pivot in there. Odegaard, central attack midfielder Bukayo Saka, right attack midfielder Martinelli, left attack midfielder as Lagazette is leading the line. So I don't know what you guys think about this game. Go into the comment section and tell us what you think about this game and your reaction in there to this game. But there is something that I really feel like you guys shouldn't miss out on and it's this. You should know on the head to head in there for you here onto the foot onto the rockani football podcast man city versus arsenal they've so far played 48 games in the premier league 15 wins for man city 23 wins for arsenal 57 goals scored by man city and 70 scored by arsenal 14 clean sheets kept by man city 17 kept by a side which goes by the names of Arsenal in there for you and there is something I really want to read for you that you guys won't love especially the Arsenal fans it reads Man City are unbeaten in their last 11 league games against Arsenal nine wins to draws since a 2-1 defeat at the Emirates in December 2015 they've taken 28 out of the possible 30 points against the Gunners under Pep Guardiola so you now know what it means Man City has taken possible 28 points out of the possible 30 in there for you and the other ones have been draws in there for you Arsenal has not yet beaten Man City 
into this game of football. So that's what I really had for you. Your predictions are welcome in the comment section below. I don't think Arsenal is winning this one. The best they are really going to achieve is a draw in there, especially if at all they really manage to capitalize onto Man City not creating chances. And you know, Aaron Ramsdale will come in and save close to three or five chances in there for you, created by Man City. So that defense has to be on red alert onto the forward of Man City because I really feel like Bernardo. Mm, Bernardo Sterling and the player who goes by the names of Gabby Jesus are really going to lead the line for Man City and they're really going to be running Arsenal left, right and centre. So I really think the best result Arsenal can get this is a draw and the only way they can get it out of this is really getting that first goal ahead of Man City or be sure that they can score one or two goals into this encounter. That will ensure them for a draw. If at all they score one goal and defend very well, they can get a draw. If at all they score two and ensure defending very well, they can really come out and, and really get even maximum points out of this game. I sign out for now. See you later. Happy New Year and Happy 2021 as we end it and as you usher into a new year, that is 2022. May the Lord bless you abundantly in there. We give thanks to the Lord. We give glory to the Almighty God who has in this year come to an end and giving us life to usher into a new year. This is Rokan David aka Arad onto the Rokan Football Podcast. We are broadcasting live from the African Cover Studios and we sign out for now. See you later in our next video onto this channel.